I like that old Duffy. She's she's who she is. She likes to talk and she likes to dance and she finds a way. Tatterhood makes her own way too. This story comes from Norway. And it starts out in a way you'll pretty much recognize from other stories. Once upon a time there was a king and a queen and they had no children. And this grieved the queen very much. She was lonesome and she wanted to have children playing around the palace. So the king said if what she wanted was to hear voices, why didn't she invite her nieces to come stay with her for a while? And so it wasn't long before she did have two little nieces romping through the palace, making noise, playing in the courtyard. And one day, as the queen watched from above, she saw the two lassies playing with a stranger, a little girl clad in tattered clothes. The queen hurried herself down the stairs. Little girl, she said sharply, this is a palace courtyard. You cannot play here. We asked her to play, her nieces said. And they ran over to her, and they ragged little girl, and they took her by the hand. The little girl looked up at the queen, and she said, with a glint in her eye, You'd not chase me away if you knew the powers my mother has. Who is your mother? asked the queen. What powers? Chow pointed out to a woman selling eggs in the marketplace outside the palace. If she wants to, my mother can tell people how to have children. All else has failed. Aha, this caught the queen's interest. She said, Please tell your mother I wish to speak to her in the palace. And the little girl ran out into the marketplace. It was not very long before a woman came to visit the queen. Your daughter says that you have powers and that you could tell me how I may have children of my own, said the queen. The queen should not listen to a children's chatter said the woman. Sit down, said the queen. And then she ordered her fine food and drink. She talked to the woman. She told her how much she longed for children of her own more than anything in the world. And as the woman finished her ale, she said cautiously that maybe she could help. Maybe she did know a spell or two. Maybe it wouldn't do any harm to try. Then she got very specific. You must have two pails of water brought to you before you go to bed, said the egg woman. And in each of them you must wash yourself and afterward pour away the water underneath the bed. The next morning when you look under you'll see two flowers will have sprung up. One will be fair and one will be rare. The fair one you must eat but the rare one you must let stand. Now mind you, don't forget that. And the queen dismissed her. And that night, she followed this advice. And the next morning, under the bed were two flowers. One was green and oddly shaped. The other was pink and fragrant. And so she ate the pink flower at once. It tasted so sweet that she just couldn't help herself. She ate the other. <laughs> she said, I don't think it can help or hurt either way. Queens. It wasn't long before the queen realized she was with child. And sometime later, she had a birthing. First was born a girl who had a wooden spoon in one hand and rode upon a goat. A queer-looking little creature she was, and the moment she came into the world, she cried out, Mama! If I'm your mama, said the queen, God give me grace to mend my ways. Oh, don't be sorry, said the girl riding about on her goat. The next one born will be much fairer to look upon. And so it was. The second twin was born fair and sweet, which pleased the queen very much. Though the twin sisters were as different as they could be, they grew up very fond of each other. Where one was, the other must be. But that elder twin soon had the nickname of Tatterhood, for she was strong and raucous and careless, and she was always racing about on her goat. Her clothes were always torn and mud spatter, her hood always in tatters. 
No one could keep her in pretty clean dresses. She insisted on wearing her oldest clothes. And finally the queen gave up and let her do as she pleased. One Christmas Eve, when the twin sisters were almost grown, there was a terrific noise and clatter out in the gallery outside the queen's rooms. Tatterhood asked what it was that was crashing and dashing about the passage. The queen sighed and told her it was a pack of trolls who invaded the palace every seven years. There was nothing to be done about the evil creatures. The palace just ignored them and endured their mischief until they went away. Tatterhood looked at her mother in surprise. Nonsense, she said. I'll go out and drive them away myself. Oh, everyone protested. She, she, she must leave the trolls alone. Why, they were far too dangerous. Tatterhood laughed. She insisted she wasn't even afraid of trolls. She could and would drive them away. She did warn the queen, though, that all the doors must be kept shut tight. And then she went out into the gallery. She laid about those trolls with that wooden spoon, whacking them on the head and shoulders, rounding them up to drive them out. And soon the whole palace shook with the crashes and shrieking until it seemed that the place would fall apart. And just then, her twin sister worried about her, poked her head out to look, and one of the trolls saw it and psh, took off her head, put on the head of a calf instead. The poor princess ran back into the room, mooing like a cow. When Tatterhood came back in and saw her sister, she was furious at the queen's attendants for having left the door, let her get out the door. She scolded them all around. She asked them what they thought of their carelessness now that her sister had to have a calf's head on. Well, I'll see if I can get her free from the troll spell, said Tatterhood, but I'll need a ship, and it better be in full trim and well fitted. Now the king, her father, recognized that she was quite extraordinary despite her odd looks and wild ways. So he agreed to do this, but he did want her to have a captain and a crew. Mm-mm. Tatterhood stood firm. She wanted no captain, no crew. She would sail the ship alone. Finally, what could they do? They let her have her way. And Tatterhood and her sister sailed off together. With a good wind behind him, they sailed right to the land of trolls, tied up at the landing place. She told her sister to stay quite still, but to stay on board, and she rode her goat right up to the troll's house. Through an open window, she could see her sister's head mounted on the wall. She leaped in through a window, grabbed the head off the wall, and leapt back outside. She, she and the goat set off together with the trolls right behind him. They shrieked at her and swarmed around her like angry bees. The goat just snorted and butted them, and she hit them with the wooden spoon until they had to give up and let her escape. When Tatterhood got back to the ship, she took the calf's head, offered her sister, and put the real one back on. <sighs> and now her sister was once more human. Well, why go back? Let's sail on and see something of the world, said Tatterhood, and her sister readily agreed. So they sailed along the coast, stopping here and there, until at last they reached a distant kingdom. Tatterhood tied up the ship at the landing place. When the people of the castle saw the strange sail, they sent down messengers to find out who sailed the ship and where it came from. They were startled to find no one on board but Tatterhood, and she was riding round the deck on her goat. When they asked if there was anyone else on board, Tatterhood answered that yes, she had her sister with her. The messengers asked to see her, but Tatterhood said no. They then asked, well, would the sisters come up to the castle for an audience with the king and queen and his two sons? No, said Tatterhood. Let them come down to the ship if they wish to see us. And then she began to gallop about on the goat till the deck thundered. Well, the elder prince was very curious about these newcomers, and he hastened down to the shore the very next day. When he saw the fair younger twin, he fell right in love with her, and he wanted to marry her. Why, no, indeed, she declared, I'll not leave my sister Tatterhood. I'll not marry till she marries. No one would want to marry that odd creature who rode a goat and looked like a beggar. But hospitality must be given to strangers. So the two sisters were invited to a feast up at the castle, and the prince begged his younger brother to escort Tatterhood. The younger twin brushed her hair and put on her finest kirtle for this event. 
and Tatterhood refused to change her clothes. But you could wear one of my dresses, said her sister, instead of that raggedy cloak and those old boots. Tatterhood laughed. Oh, you might take off that tattered hood and, and wash those suit streaks from your face, said her sister crossly, for she wanted her beloved Tatterhood to look her best. Nope, said Tatterhood. I'll go as I am. Well, all the people of the town turned out to see these strangers riding up to the castle. Some procession it was, too. At the head rode the prince and Tatterhood's twin sister on fine white horses draped with cloth of gold. And then next came the prince's brother on a splendid horse with silver trappings and beside him rode Tatterhood on her goat. They rode in silence for a while. Gee, you're not much for conversation, said Tatterhood. I mean, haven't you anything to say? What's there to talk about, he said. So they rode on in silence for a while longer, till he burst out. Why do you ride on that goat instead of a horse? Since you asked, said Tatterhood, I could ride on a horse if I choose. And at once the goat turned into a fine horse. Mmm. The young man's eyes popped wide open. He looked at her with a little more interest. Why do you hide your head beneath that ragged hood? he asked. Why is it a ragged hood? Well, I can change it if I choose, she said, and then on her long dark hair was a circlet of gold and tiny pearls. Ooh, you are an unusual girl, he exclaimed. But that wooden spoon, why do you choose to carry that? Is it a spoon? And in her hand, the spoon had turned into a gold-tipped wand of rowan wood. I see, said the prince's brother, smiling. And he hummed a little tune as they rode on together. At last Tatterhood said to him, Well, aren't you going to ask me why I wear these ragged clothes? No, said the prince. It's clear that you wear them because you choose to. And when you want to change them, you will. Well, at that, Tatterhood's ragged cloak disappeared, and she was clad all in green velvet. The prince smiled and said, mm, The color suits you. The castle loomed up ahead of them. Tatterhood said to him, Don't you want to see what my face looks like beneath all these streaks of soot? That too, he said, shall be as you choose. As they rode together through the castle gates, Tatterhood touched the rowan wand to her face, and the streaks disappeared. Now whether her face was lovely or plain, we'll never know, because it didn't matter in the least to the prince's brother, or to Tatterhood. But I can tell you this, the feast at the castle that night was a merry one. There were games and singing, and the dancing lasted for many days.